In Planetside 2, you are an individual in a giant war that is hard to fathom in its entirety. So don't worry about fathoming too much. When you start playing, you'll need to have the attitude that you are in control and you should try to find a battle that will maximize your own personal enjoyment. Don't just try driving an ATV aimlessly up a mountain towards a vague mission directive that might expire by the time you get there. Look at the map, see where the battles are happening, see which bases your team is trying to take, or see which bases your enemies are trying to take from you. Look at the relative populations of each fight to see if your team is being overwhelmed, or if there are so much reinforcements that by the time you get to the battle, the battle will be over. And then, only then, should you drive your ATV aimlessly up a mountain to your own personal enjoyment. If you do want to jump right in, there is an instant action option which will place you in the middle of a fight. This is unsurprisingly deadly most of the time, but better for new players who don't have extensive access to all of the vehicles yet. There's also a redeploy option. Use the bumpers to cycle through zooms and positions to find the fight that you want to get into. When you first start playing, you'll need to make the only permanent decision you'll make, which faction to join. I'd break it down for you, but you should really go for what feels right. I picked the Terran Republic because they're red. You're restricted in class choice at first, which is fine. You'll want to start with the Heavy Assault. You have an Overshield you can activate with the L1 button. That's the class specific ability. You need to note it makes your character significantly more visible and although it recharges, it is not unlimited and will run out simply by being activated. You also have a Rocket Launcher, which unsurprisingly fires rockets. Get out there and start taking on enemies. There are three factions still. Try to target the other two. L2, aim down sights. If you start firing before you aim down sights, you'll inherit your hip fire accuracy. Here's the sensitivities I've personally settled on. The indicator above a player's head shows what team they're on. If you're like me, you might think red means bad guy and accidentally shoot up someone on your own team. I think we all get a couple of those. I think I do at least. Additionally, you'll want to mark enemies with R1. If you see someone running around and they don't have an indicator, they're on a different team and you can mark them for the UI of everyone nearby. Enemy light assault in the area. This is really important, you can more easily trace players and fire at them even though they're not in line of sight. If you die, or should I say when I die, the game reveals game relative accomplishments over survival time. I'd break this down, but come on, base is defended. If you have been sticking with the team, you might be fortunate enough to die within the proximity of a medic who, if there aren't a lot of bullets whizzing past your corpse and they're familiar with the L2 button, will revive you for experience points. You get experience points for basically every interaction, repairing turrets, defeating enemies, and sometimes blowing up if you're good enough. It. Every couple hundred experience points earns a cert or a certification point. They also fill an experience points bar which builds your level. When you hit level 2, you're given an amazing 100 certs you can spend on upgrading your weapons, upgrading your equipment for individual classes like scopes on guns, the dark light flashlight, or upgrading your overshield for example. Most of the upgrades are focused on increasing the breadth of a character's abilities, allowing them to become more dynamic on the battlefield. You don't need to spend these certs right away, especially in the beginning zone Coltier or Coltier or or whatever you want to call it, no one will have enough certs to make their character significantly more dynamic than yours, and no one higher than level 15 is going to be here. You're better off using the time to find the class and weapons you like. If your cert wallet is on fire, I will recommend the 4x crosshair scope for your preferred weapon. I have to warn you that each scope is just for the particular firearm you purchase it for, but for a weapon like the repeater, it will transcend to all classes that can equip it. The maps and planets that are very big, you are welcome to run around on them as much as you'd like, but if you need to make some distance, you should find a vehicle terminal. It must be your faction's color and not destroyed, at which point you can use what are called nanites to print out a vehicle. You're given a nanite allowance every minute, but you cannot hold more than 750. The ATV, for example, costs 50 nanites. If you focus on keeping your vehicles intact, you won't even notice there's a nanite system in place. There are also air vehicle terminals, but don't worry about them until you're level 10. Also, don't stand on the platform vehicles appear on. When you look at a planetside map, you'll see there are more than just one base with a few capture points on it. On the introductory island Coltier, there are three unique bases and three respective outposts that serve as buffers between them, each peppered with capture points. The game issues missions for the nearest base you should consider invading or defending. These are great guides and likely sent to your entire squad to direct cohesive movement. Your squad is indicated by green numbers on the map and green indicators above their heads. You're automatically sent into voice chat with a squad you automatically join. You're not punished for disregarding any of it, aside from the natural and expected consequence of disorganization. Bases have capture points within. You need to have a majority of them to start moving this tug of war bar. That's awesome. This timer says how much time remains before 
before the bar is emptied or filled, and in this example, when the bar is filled, the base is considered captured by the Terran Republic. Back to me, instead of walking, I am pulling a Sunderer, which acts as a mobile spawn point. I can get experience points for every player who chooses to spawn at it. Squad members can choose to spawn within it, even while moving, and once I've arrived at a strategic destination, I can press triangle to deploy, allowing anyone in my faction to spawn there. Place Sunderers as close as you can to enemy capture points, but remember they are just buses and can be destroyed if and when your enemy finds them. When you're defending, that's the question you should be asking, where are they coming from? Sunderers can be placed in a wide range around the base, but they have to be outside of these red anti-spawn circles and cannot be too close to another Sunderer. They can have advanced shields and armor, so you'll need a lot of rockets or C4s or a tank to blow them up, so get your squad together and try to take them down. And finally, make sure when you purchase something, you equip it as well. I think that's all I wanted to cover, so you aren't completely clueless on the battlefield. I'll allow you some sense of discovery and follow up with more explanation if necessary. The tutorial voice will explain everything you do and will remind you not to shoot friendlies or whatever, but aside from that, understand that Planetside is a big game with big goals and will only achieve them if you want to. My name is Gold Vision. I play as TR on the PlayStation, VS on the PC, and thank you for watching.